had to be there. Good Chaydesh. So the question is, and this is a Shaila that I got quite often and uh, I get quite often, and this time it was a little bit more interesting. A lady asked me, she texted me, is it true that you're not supposed to do, women don't do Malacha on Rosh Chaydesh? So I told her that the Shulchan Aruch says yeah, it's a minig not to do malacha, and she said, "Oh, because I'm moving and I must do the laundry." So I told her like this: I said that miikar adin, it's really totally in minig. It's not clear, in fact, which malachas the minig is not to do. The minig is called teire. Gavalik Sefer writes that the ikar minig was not to spin, not to do tevia. What, where does that come from? Tviya spinning, which most women today are not sitting at home spinning uh, the loom. <laughs> so it would almost not apply. But where does that come from? Because Chazal say, and the Midrashim tell us, is that the women of Klal Yisrael got Oshchodesh as a Yontav. And this is quoted, of course, in the tool. They got a Yontav. Why? Because they were Atzlaniyos. That means they were lazy. They held back when it came to Chet Egel Azov. They didn't participate in Egel Azov. They gave the, the husbands a hard time. And when it came to B'ni Asa Mishkan, the building of the Mishkan, there was Zrizos. Where was the Ika Zrizus, the alacrity? Where did they see the women jumping to do something? Their Chachma, it says that the Noshim Tavu Esaizim. They were spinning the goats. So one of the main malachas that stands out for the women in the binyan of the Mishkan, the building of the Mishkan, was spinning. So therefore, since they received the Yom Tov, Rosh Chodesh as a Yom Tov, because of their Zrizos for the Mishkan and holding back from Egel Azov, in order to show and signify that, they do not spin on Rosh Chodesh. That's the, one of the main sources. However, the Minig is also especially today, there, almost, there would be no difference. So many do not do laundry. But I told this lady the following, I said, since today you have machines, machines don't take much effort. If anything, it's really the effort of carrying the load and bringing it downstairs, perhaps even turning the knob a little bit. I said, you should ask your husband to help you out. And I saw, I was very excited because afterwards I saw that Rav Chaim Kanievsky this is the Eitzel of Chaim Kanievsky gives. He says, the woman should put everything into the, into the machine and the husband should turn. He should turn it on. So he's participating. So, Baruch Hashem, we solved that. What's Kedai to take from this is that this Yontav, especially this month, is very special and unique. If you go home to your wife, you should say good Yontav because it's a Yontav for the women. And you should say, Yishal Koyach, that you taught us what it means, Zrizus. And what it means to know when to be an atzlan. When it comes to Averas, you should be an atzlan. You should be lazy. We all have laziness. We just have to know when to use the laziness and when to use the zrizus. So this month especially is Tammuz. Tammuz is when you zayin Tammuz is when they built the Egel Azov. So this specific month is special for the ladies. Because this was the Yontav. The Yontav was given through this month. So that's number one. Number two, as we discussed, the Ika Avoida especially is to try to work on ourselves, <laughs> when it comes to the month of Tammuz, we started discussing Koyrach, Koyrach's major mistake. And I wanted to just discuss one point, which we were discussing earlier, is that we look, it's very easy to look at the whole episode of Koyrach and just to say, ah, Koyrach, this idiot, this Rasha, this Marusha, Choyrach and Moshe Rabbeinu. So I was telling Benji the following, there's a, it's written down that the Yismach Moshe, was learning with his son, the Yitav Leib. And the Yitav Leib was also giving a little bit of a dismissal, ah, Koirach, Rosh Merusha, he was nothing. So the Yismach Moshe told him something absolutely fascinating. He said, you should know, I remember myself begilgulim three times. I was a Gilgal as a sheep in the flock of Yaakov Avina, and I remember the tune. This I have to verify the exact source, but this is what it says, that the tune of Yankel had a lamb, which turned into Mary had a little lamb, that tune actually, was, he says, I remember the tune of Yaakov Avinu. I can't verify that, but that's what it says. Number two, he said, I was a Gilgo in the time of Koirach. And I want to tell you that I, was, I stood and, I, and he asked him, so which side were you on? He said, I was on neither side. Koirach was so convincing. Koirach was coming, now it didn't look like he was not coming from Kedusha. He was coming and he was saying, I want to be Kaddish and I want to be the Kohen Gadol. 
And it shows you how, how challenging when a person without, you know, without a Rebbe, obviously, so what, what, pull the, what pulls a person when you're in such a conflict is make sure that you have a Rebbe that directs you very clearly. Someone that you trust. And if Moshe Rabbein at that time was a leader, it was really the Jewish, the Jewish ladies that said, what are you, crazy? And that's what you see also in Adas Koyach and with, the, with everyone else that was trying to join the Koyach. It was the women that would save the husbands because they saw clearly. If there's a leader like Moshe Rabbein and that's our leader, that's who we're going to trust. And that's the avoid of this month is to trust. Your, you should find your Rebbe and you should find the, and, and if you have a leader that's leading you, we should trust him. And the second a person starts veering up and saying, eh, and this, I'm not going to listen to anyone, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and this and that, that's when a person runs into major trouble. A good choy